Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another fantastic episode of Truth Wanted. I'm your host, Objectively Dan, and this is the show where we talk to people about what they believe and why live Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time every single week with a special guest. And this week is a very special guest. It's Hammett Meta, the friendly atheist. Hammett, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Hammett Meta is uh, a lot of things: activist, um, blogger, journalist. Uh, you know, he is a writer for Pathos. Um, and uh, I mean, you've done a lot of stuff. You've you've done stuff on YouTube. Um, you've done like um, uh, you've been a teacher for part of your life. Right. I mean, uh, maybe you're the better uh, explainer of this. Yeah, I mean, 90% of what I do now is FriendlyAtheist.com writing about uh, atheism-related mm -hmm. stories. I do uh, YouTube as well under Friendly Atheist. There's a podcast. But yeah, I do a little bit of as much as possible. Yeah, yeah. And so I remember first watching your stuff a couple of years ago on YouTube. You had like, uh, you know, uh, 10 arguments that Christians shouldn't use against <laughs> atheists and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And a weird thing about us is a couple of years ago, you actually wrote a piece about me when I came out as an atheist about uh, uh, what, three years ago now, I think it was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that was uh, kind of interesting. I remember you were talking with Anthony Magna Bosco about it and stuff. I was like, whoa, cool. That's crazy. And I, more people were watching the video and stuff. It was and a now, fun story. And yes, yeah. full circle now. There we go. Full circle. Yeah. Now you're here on Truth Wanted. So welcome. Welcome. <laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah. Really cool to have you on. So what have you been up to lately as far as your projects? The biggest, you know, the biggest new project, if you want to call it that, because the blog has been going on and off and writing about that stuff has been happening for like ever internet in internet years. But the biggest new project has been kind of going slowly through the book of Genesis chapter by chapter on yes. YouTube and talking about, hey, Christians keep saying, read this thing um, and it'll not read it with certain uh, context, not read it while also reading this analysis of it, just read it. And so yeah. I will take Ken Ham at face value and I will go through Genesis and it is somewhat snarky and stuff, but it is, all right, fine. I'm reading verse by verse. Let's talk about what it is. And it's actually been uh, educational for me as well because it's been a long time since I feel I've even touched it. Hmm. Other than, you know, out of context clips that everyone tries to use. Right. But actually going through the stories and saying, holy crap, this is the story. Like, I thought I knew that one and I totally didn't. And so just kind of going through it and um, I'm almost done with Genesis. We'll see how far that what, what happens next. But that's kind of my quarantine project, I guess. Yeah. Have you learned anything new since you started that you didn't know when you were doing this? So much. I yeah. mean, again, I think when people talk about reading the Bible literally and you will get stuff out of it, it's like, holy crap, there's so much worse stuff if you read it literally. And also, I think when we talk about the problems with Genesis, everyone focuses on like Genesis 1, the creation story. Mm -hmm. And no one knows what happens. And, and there's genealogies, but like there are other lesser known stories that I wasn't familiar with. And I wasn't raised in Christianity. So like mm -hmm. I I know about Joseph in the abstract. I know about uh, Cain and Abel in the abstract, but actually getting into the details that I never learned because I didn't do Sunday school. And then just kind of like, holy crap, that's what happens. Let's talk about that. Yeah, That's been entertaining for me. And a lot of the comments on YouTube I really appreciated are from people who said, I grew up in church. I learned this stuff in Sunday school, but I didn't think about it really because I was so young. So I'm just learning about it. Or they taught us this story, but they didn't teach us those details. Right, right. I remember <laughs> like when I was kind of doing my deconstruction phase and really reading the Bible, like really reading the Bible, I was figuring out some of these details too. I mean, like I grew up a Christian. I did go to Sunday school. I did hear yeah. these stories, but I didn't read like chapter to chapter. You know, like when you go to church, it's always... We're going to look at like these two verses today right. and then we're going to expand on this message for the next hour. 
You know, um, I didn't know that. Uh, you know, I knew the story of Lot and his wife, uh, right. you know, turning to pillars of salt. I didn't know the part about Lot having sex with his daughters. <laughs> you know, like they didn't right. tell me that part. And even um, if even if I have heard about that because it's a thing atheists will bring up, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily know the context it's right. in, or if there is some kind of context that justifies some of these stories. And I'm not going to pretend. Even on YouTube, I'm not pretending this is a substitute for seminary or Sunday school. Sure. But it very much is. All right, fine. I will read it at face value. Let's see if anything comes from it. And even in some of the chapters with relatively boring genealogies, it is kind of interesting to see what nuggets to pull from there. I mean, there are entire chapters where they say this person had 12 kids. And it's like, I'm making that number up. But like a section where it says this person had this many kids. And it's like, no, he has 13. One of them's a girl. Like, mm. just skipped over that. And Yeah. <laughs> Learn some it, things about the culture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and for sure. uh, it's interesting. I don't know how far I'll take that, but it, it's been fun, kind of, in a way, <laughs> just yeah. learning, well, learning about it and getting feedback from it. Christians, I mean, like, I will say, like, when I was first absorbing a lot of atheist content, I think the biggest mistake a lot of atheists make is they do take some stuff out of context, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the Christian has it in the right context either. Right. It's kind of like, okay, let's look at the what academics, what historians right. have really looking at this stuff, not not on the atheist side, not on the Christian side or from church church people rather more right. so like hey i've been studying this book for like 10 years i've learned this original language i i go to classes and and talk to professors about this this is the research that we've done and um you learn different things like like yeah like some stuff does make more sense in original context some stuff is even worse in original context right. and sometimes we don't even know the original context we're just making our best educated guess and um, I don't because, say this, I don't say yeah. this on YouTube, but I try at least in a cursory way to look up what people have said about those passages, like mm. even specific verses, because I don't just want to be tongue in cheek when I'm talking about them. If there is some relevant context to some of these passages, that's worth talking about sure. in the in in the videos. So I've I have tried to look at both atheists talking about those verses and the Christian take on those verses to see if I'm missing something. Um, because in it, like kind of, I'll read through it. I will kind of jot down notes of my own thoughts for all of those sections. And then I'm looking up what have like 12 other people said about the exact same passages. One, to see if I got it right. And mm. two, like, oh, wow, they caught something as they should have that I totally didn't. And I wonder if that's interesting to bring up. So that's been a fun little side project that's kind of yeah. been a thing on youtube that has nothing to do with the news like right. trump is not involved in that well yeah <laughs> so I, it's been a different change of pace for me i i bet that's pretty fun especially with everything going on now and i do want to talk about um your your work in the news but before i do i just want to remind people folks this is a live call-in show in case you're just tuning in you can come talk to me and have it we're going to take calls in just a second but if you want to get in line Lines are open right now. Go ahead and call the number that's on the screen. And uh, we're here to talk to you. This is Truth Wanted. So, uh, yeah, I want to talk to you about this because you've spent a, the past, you know, a career uh, as, a, well, I mean, you've had a couple different careers, but you, you, a lot of people know you for your journalism work. You know, you, 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 uh, you know, call yourself a blogger, call yourself whatever you want. You write about the news. Okay. Yeah. So, like, that's important. Um, and, uh, Right now, I think we live in a time where people, I think statistically we can demonstrate, I, I've seen Gallup polls on this at least, I, uh, that people don't trust the news now more than any other time pretty much in the country's history. I mean, it's it's our, our trust in sort of, you know, our fourth branch of government, as some people call it, um, yeah. is really, really low. And, and I think, in my opinion, you know, news and news media provides an important resource for people um and it is something that we should have a lot of trust in and so you especially as someone who openly identifies as an atheist and um covers stuff you know that's interesting for atheists but also just news in general i imagine you get a lot of flack <laughs> for what you do so i was wondering if you could talk about that a little bit like what's that sure. experience like so you said the word journalist. I Man. honestly would not use that word. Um, okay. Partly because I have too much respect for actual journalists who do mm. the, the solid reporting that forms the basis 
of what I then comment on. So mm -hmm. blogger, commentary, analyst, whatever you want to call it, those would be more accurate to me than yeah. journalist, even if I sometimes can break news or report news. Yeah. Um, but what I try to do, because you're right, there are a lot of people who either might dismiss what I'm writing because I'm an atheist, um, or they might just think, oh, it's a blogger. Why should I care what this person has to say? What I try to do, and I've always tried to do this, but um, I do try to make it very clear. Look, here's the story as it's written in the news. Here's where I'm getting it from. Here's the link for you so you could check it out for yourself. Um, and this is what the story is about. Here's the video, if I can provide it for you. And then here's my analysis. Here's my response to that. I try to make that very clear because sometimes when I'm looking at either right wing or Christian websites, they don't always link the source material. They do put it into a context that I think is unfair. And they actually try not to link to the primary sources because they will make up an excuse. Like, for example, just today, there was a group that was complaining about some ads placed by a fruit company. Mm. I don't know why, but they were complaining about it. And they were telling you, here's what's wrong with it. They are, it's very inappropriate for kids. I had to search for the videos myself because they would not link to them directly. Of course. And it wasn't hard to find, but the fact that they didn't put them up on their website for people to see, they just said, we need you to sign our petition to complain about it. This is not a one-off. Like this mm. happens in so many, especially Christian news outlets, or at least commentary or blogging outlets that I mm. see. So I try really hard to say, look, if you are a Christian, let's assume you are, and you're reading what I have to say, and you're reading it because you're hate reading it because you want to be angry about whatever I'm writing, right. fine. But here's where I'm getting this stuff from. Here's who I'm quoting. You don't believe that I'm quoting them accurately. Here's the transcript, and here's the video for you. Mm -hmm. And so you said, do I get flack for any of this? I actually don't think I do because I think if you mm -hmm. disagree with my opinion, so be it. That happens. But very, I don't really get a lot of flack for saying you uh, misquoted somebody. You took them out of context. This is an unfair analysis of something because mm -hmm. I try really hard to make sure I'm writing for an audience that doesn't agree with me and then trying to justify what I'm saying. And if you don't like my take on it, so be it. And sometimes that'll be a source of contention, but not on the story itself. And mm -hmm. I try not to be too clever or exaggerate with the headlines either. It's yeah. very much, here's the person, here's what they said. Yeah. And I'd say, you know, from what I've read from your stuff, that tends to be uh, typically true, right? I mean, like, uh, unfortunately, we do live in a world where most people are just going to read the headlines. Yeah. Um, and I, I, you know, you want to make and sure your an headlines are, yeah. <laughs> you want yeah, to be interesting, but you don't want to be oh, yeah. misleading. Fun fact. So we, we got um, in Texas, we have a couple of different state competitions for UIL and I, I was in headline writing and I got first place <laughs> uh, awesome. my senior year um, for my district. And I, I was going to go to the next level uh, for that, but it was the same weekend as prom. Oh, and so my God. Said, no, I'm sucks. just going to go to prom. I'm sorry. I'm not going to compete to write headlines, man. Like this is my senior year of high school. So. I'm a, I'm a coach uh, for a <laughs> yeah. public high school for a competitive yeah. team. And yeah. this is something we, uh, thankfully our state competition is not mm. over like a prom weekend, Yeah. but there are weekends where we got to compete between like homecoming dance or this or that. And it's like, yeah. all right, I will let you slide on some of these. I just right. need you for these particular dates. I need you for those. Yeah. We my teacher was like, my teach was like, yeah, that's totally cool. She had no hard feelings, which yeah. was nice, but um, that's a funny side thing. Um, but you but, missed out on a weekend of writing headlines. No, dude. Like, <laughs> what an honor. You know, it, it could have been something. No, but, but anyway. Awesome. I, I did that sort of competition in high school, too. Those are a that's blast, like, and they mean a yeah. lot. Yeah, and 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 you're right. It's like everything I learned from doing that is exactly what BuzzFeed and everybody else is doing. But that, that's a side thing for what I wanted to ask. Sure, but, sure, sure. But uh, what I was trying to get to, I guess, was, you know, why do you think it's important to have the perspective that you do and in, in, in you know we'll call it your blogging efforts right yeah. because I'll, I'll say this when i was a christian i had no desire to look at christian specific news yeah it, it never occurred to me and obviously there's a market for it and that's why there's people that out there that do it but now as an atheist i do look at news like yours and other um you know content creators and stuff that are talking about this stuff and what why do you think that is what do you think makes what you do like what, what, what specifically about your stuff that, that's important? 
So here's what I would strive to do on my end. Mm. I think the value of it is that one, we are currently more so, and I think part of it is just it's Trump and he takes up so much of our bandwidth in general. Mm. That's not a political thing. That's just, that's what he does. Right. But there's so much news. And because it's him, there's so much religion attached to him mm. that there is a lot of news that has a religious spin on it. And you don't hear that in the news because they don't want to talk about religion per se. They'll talk about the political aspect of it. But for example, just to throw one out there that's not uh, a political thing, like Mike Pompeo has promoted Christianity as Secretary of State. Mm. But that's not a story that gets a lot of news attention because it's kind of off to the side. It's not directly with Trump. So it is, I think there's a question of how do I, uh, how do I learn about this news? And also, is there an atheist take on it? And by mm. atheist take, I mean, is there a church state separation angle to this? Is there, because for us, for people like us, our atheism is a part of our identity, even if it's not the thing we think about 24 seven or anything. I think that's true of Christians too. They are Christian. It's something that motivates them and drives them. They think like a Christian, whatever that means to them. So one question is, okay, I see the news. This thing is happening. I wonder if there's a way to think about it from that perspective. And so there are, I mean, there is an entire Christian cinematic universe of bookstores and blogs and magazines and all of that. Right. That says, here's how to interpret pop culture and everything going on in the world through our lens. And we can talk about, is this movie a good Christian movie? Is there a Christian lesson we can derive from all of this stuff? And I'm not knocking that. That is a valuable thing for people who think like that. There is no atheist equivalent to that, partly because there's just fewer of us and fewer of us who care about that as much as they care about it in the Christian world. Mm -hmm. But also I think that is valuable because there's so much news that is local when it comes to atheism stuff. Like what's going on in a city council meeting? What's going on in terms of a lawsuit? And I don't think random people care about what a nonprofit group or a advocacy group is doing because they're not members necessarily of mm -hmm. the Freedom From Religion Foundation or American Atheist or American Humanist Association. What I can provide is to say, here's what these groups are doing because they think like you, because they take this stuff as seriously as you do and you should know about it. Here's something that the government did that, and they did it because they were inspired by a white evangelical base that wants them to do it. And you're probably someone who doesn't like that. And let me tell you, what the problems are with that if you need help in analyzing it. Because again, I have the luxury, it's my job of thinking about this stuff, writing about it every right. day. That's a privilege. Not everyone has that luxury because they have jobs, they have lives, they have kids, they got to do stuff. If yeah. I can say, look, here's the thing that happened today that you should know about because I don't want to waste your time. Here's, a, here's the reason I care about it. I'm, I, I try really hard not to post stuff that I don't care about personally, but I do try to cover the stuff that is important as well, even if it's something that might be a slog for me to get through. But it's like, look, this story is important. You should know about it. Let's talk about why it's important. Here's why you should care, especially because you're the sort of person who is motivated by church state separation, religious right. freedom, all that stuff. So that's, I think, what I can provide people. That's at least what I like to think my job description is, even though there isn't one. And so, hey, if I can be of service in that sense, and I should add, most of the news, the, the, the news and journalists that are doing a good job of it, they are not taking a stance on that stuff. They are reporting the news by the book as they should. But sometimes you need a little more context with that. Mm -hmm. um, just to take like the Jerry Falwell story that has propped, uh, uh, cropped up in recent weeks. Right. That's an interesting story if you're interested in how Trump got elected if you're interested in lurid sex scandals of sorts. Sure. But there is also an, a side of that that talks about what does that mean when a guy like Jerry Falwell is running an ostensibly Christian university yeah. where you would be expelled from the school for doing yeah. what he did. Um, there is the hypocrisy atheist angle of it as right. well. Or how there, does a man like him get in power in the first place? You know, yes. or what does, you know, all of that stuff is so interesting to talk mm. about. I think for Pathios, which is the broader website that I write for that has a lot of different religious views on it, 
I think we kind of joke that a few years ago, there was a story about Josh Duggar uh, in the news because he was caught in a variety of scandals of his own. But what was interesting about it is it seemed like it didn't matter what religion you were. It didn't matter what side of the political spectrum you were on. There was something in it for everybody. And yeah, we yeah writing, I could see that. I could see that. You yeah. were all writing about it from such a variety of angles that it was mm. fascinating to to just watch. Oh, like, oh, crap. There were yeah. like 30 different takes on that one it's, story. It's kind of like Tiger King. It's like, you know, you don't have to be into watching uh, dirty drama, uh, reality television to watch that. Like, there's a lot like there's a lot about animal abuse and laws that I didn't I didn't know about. And, and you yeah. get a little bit of the drama also so that's and yeah that's i it. totally get that and yeah. i feel like a lot of the stuff i write for it i don't i try to again this is the thing that is in the back of my head i'm well aware that most of the people i assume reading anything i write are not atheists but they care mm. about these issues for whatever reason maybe they're just progressive liberal on that side of the fence but i i'm not writing for other atheists per se i'm, I'm mm. writing for me i happen to be an atheist but this is stuff I think other atheists should care about. I mean, I care yeah, about it. And if for you, sure, great. Yeah, if you actively choose to use that label for yourself, because again, you know, we can talk about the specifics of what makes someone an atheist or not. But yeah, like if you're in the scene, like if you are looking at the issues and stuff, I agree. I think there's a, a point there to be made. I, have I would a also, I would also yeah. point out that I try on the website anyway. I don't really talk about like atheism 101. Like mm -hmm. uh, if you're an agnostic, if you. Uh, is this person a legit atheist? I, I don't care. Uh, so I, it's very much, I'm not writing to, to convert people. I'm yeah. not writing to say this is what an atheist should believe because that's a stupid thing to argue. Mm -hmm. It's very much like, look, here's my perspective on it. There you go. What well, a quick question too, because um, since you do stuff for Patheos, which has, I mean, they have writers of all different kinds yeah. of religious persuasions on there. Um, and so like, are you in communication with a lot of those guys? Like, do, do they have takes on your stuff? Like, uh, is there, what's the interaction there? Like, I'm just curious. There, there isn't really an interaction. There are some okay. channels for us to discuss. Like there's a channel for the writers in general, but those are technical questions about the website. Mm. There's a channel for the atheists who write for them to talk about stuff. But again, those are mostly mm. technical computer issues issues more Got than it. you wrote this thing or sharing or steroid stories yeah way more than it's oh you wrote this thing and i disagree with it i think everyone's kind of on the same page of there are hundreds of us i mean literally there are hundreds sure. of us yeah everyone has their take we are not here unless you want to debate on your site and say this person's wrong because of this there is no back channel where we're like how dare this person write yeah. about that's well, I could just fair. see how a project like that could go south really fast when you got so many people of so many different persuasions yeah. on there. It, wow. it helps that it's 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 a business, and they're mm -hmm. very much like, look, we want to be the host for all of these conversations, and we're not here to take a stance on what it is you guys all believe in or don't. They're just like, look, you like talking about religion, do it here. And they say that to pastors. They say it to people I strongly disagree with. Um, but whatever, if we want to hash it out, then I'll write a post about it. But there, it's there not like we're secretly arguing behind the scenes. Yeah. About just just passive aggressive blogging. Really? Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> the way to go. For sure. Well, um, we are talking to Habit Meta, of course, tonight. And again, this is live and we're taking calls. So we're going to take some calls here in just a second. But first, before I do that, I need to thank the patron of the week. That's right, folks. We are talking about uh our patron of the week this is somebody who donates to the show and gets a shout out on the show and our patron of the week this week is uh, we need like a drum roll sound effect uh but it's amy petted i hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly amy but amy petted thank you so much for donating to the show and if you would like to get your name shouted out on the show and be a patron of the week you can donate on patreon.com slash truth wanted and that helps support the show that money doesn't go to me it doesn't go to most of the crew most of our crew is volunteer it mostly goes towards um getting stuff like this mic and this mic stand and the lights that are shining on me and the cameras and all kinds of stuff and it, and it just helps make shows like this one and all the other shows on the atheist experience network really awesome so thank you guys for donating on there but have it are you ready to take some calls? Let's take some calls. All right, cool. So first, uh, we got uh, Tim, who's been waiting on the line for a bit, who wants to talk to us. Uh, Tim, calling from Washington. What's going on? 
Hey, Dan. Oh, well, we got a lot of smoke here in southwest Washington. Oh, oh yeah. Forest fires. Yeah, I've been so, seeing the pictures, awful. man. I it, It's crazy. That's yeah, crazy I hope you guys there. are okay. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know that anyone has been forced evacuated yet, but um, we have so much smoke in our town that it looks almost apocalyptic. It's it's horrible. Mm. We're really sucked in. But, well, Tim, I saw from our call screener here uh, saying that you wanted to talk yeah. to us about Moses and the patriarchs uh, and whether or not they're mythical, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm as soon as this show is over, I'm going to look for Hammond because um, I'm I'm interested in hearing what his take is on Genesis. But um, I'm a Jesus mythicist and a big fan of Richard Carrier and Robert Price. And um, in their books, they mention often that uh, the patriarchs and Moses and Joshua, um, most scholars um, really have finally come to the consideration and degree that they are all myths. They're just made up people. Mm. So the Old Testament is, is just a big story. Well, Genesis in particular is just a big book of fables. Yeah, I mean, so the scholarship I've read on this, and then I want to hear him and take, I, I, I think um, broadly agrees with the idea that a lot of the patriarchal figures, at least we don't have a lot of ev evidence towards their like literal existence. Um, we certainly don't have any like original writings from Moses or original writings from, you know, any of the guys mentioned there. Um, the thing about, you know, proving whether someone was real or not is it's, it's with these kinds of stuff, it's kind of hard to do because everything is written from, I mean, not we're not talking third hand. We're not talking fifth hand. We're talking about generations of of rift between uh, the stories that are taking place and um, the actual writings of the events. And 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 yeah, uh, there are there events in the Bible that are completely made up for sure. It's hard to tell which ones are which and which ones are based on you know a historical reality that gets changed after a while. Yeah, I don't know. But if you were to ask me about Moses and some of those guys, I would say yeah, probably mythical. Jesus. That's a little uh, riskier. I don't. I wouldn't go that far. But Moses, I, I think we could confidently say probably didn't exist. What do you think, Hemant? I, I don't have an opinion on this, and that's mm. not trying to dodge the question. It is honestly that when uh, Tim, when you said like the scholars have come to this consensus on it, mm -hmm. I don't know what the scholars have said on it. Honestly, mm. you mentioned Price and Carrier. I haven't read their stuff as carefully because it's not the thing I tend to pay attention to and whether or not they are real and exaggerated or just figments of people's imagination and lore that got passed down generation after generation. It doesn't change what I think about the political issues and the cultural issues that I tend to write about. So it's just right. irrelevant for the stuff that I pay the most attention to. So I don't have a take on it to to support you or to refute you on any of that. Well, there you go. Well, Tim, what's mm -hmm. what's your take? It's not. I mean, obviously, we know that you're a mythicist, but what are the reasons why you uh, believe that? Um, I think I think for the most part, um, because a lot of a lot of them have proven. I mean, you know, we know that Noah did not um, go through the flood um, four thousand years ago um, because there was there was a flood that kind of took took over um, the continents ten thousand years ago, um, and probably the the seaside um, communities were drowned and lost because of that. Thus, where the flood myths come from all around the world, um, because the coastal communities were probably the larger civilizations, and um, they were lost due to the flooding by the polar caps melting. Um, mm. I'll push and, back on uh, you just a little bit, Tim, because I don't know for certain that we could say that that's even the case either. I think there's a lot of speculation as to where, because we are, we do see, um, you know, globally, there are different flood myths and different cultures and stuff, right? I don't know if we can like really confidently point it to one single source. Again, we can speculate, but I, I just, I'm just commenting that I don't share your same confidence, but continue. Okay, um, and um, so, but we know that we know that Noah didn't exist, and there was a worldwide flood four thousand years ago. 
I, 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 I don't know that. I, I see that's the thing. Like again, there's speculations as to I mean whatever obviously, I've whatever I've read yeah. has suggested the the flood as described in the Bible doesn't make sense. The the specifications of it and all of that um doesn't that doesn't describe the flooding that we've actually mm -hmm. seen have evidence for right now. So if you're saying that's fictional, I'm right there with you on yeah. that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, basically my take is, um, having been raised in the Mormon church and becoming a fundamentalist Pentecostal and ex-gay minister and having a, um, a theology degree, um, learning all of this stuff and finding it and researching it, listening to Carrier who, you know, I all but worship really, um, and Price, um, and doing research outside of them. They kind of springboard me into other resources. And um, so I I just like finding it. And, and um, anytime I have an opportunity to at least share my view and share what I'm learning, um, I take that opportunity. And it's not something that, you know, I, I don't necessarily, I'm not dogmatic about it, but, um, um, to a certain extent, I guess maybe I am, but I'm not really, you know, I don't try to push anyone else to believe that, to believe my mythicist theories. Let's, I'm very curious. Let's suppose you found out there was good evidence on the other side that the patriarchs, Moses, all that, those people, let's say they were real, if exaggerated in terms of the supernatural aspects of their stories with, what would that change for you? Mm. Um, I would, I would no longer call them mythical. Um, um, you know, I would probably just say exactly that. Yeah, their stories were kind of exaggerated. You know, Noah was, that, Noah was a ship builder, but he, he, the flood didn't happen. That's that's right. that's pretty much where I feel like I'm at with the stuff. I I don't care about the subject to delve into it the way. <laughs> Carrier Price, others have done. It's just not a passion thing for me. Like I would get bored doing that personally. But also because whatever the answer is, I, I don't think they're divine. I don't think the supernatural stuff is legit. If they're real or if they're fictional and myths, I don't think it changes how I think about things. I don't think it changes my day to day life for sure. Um, so to me, that's why to me, I'm just, I don't get driven by whether those people were real at some point and just exaggerated over the course of the game of telephone that is religion. Yeah. Or if they were actual uh, myths to begin with. So it, yeah. I don't know. That's to me why I'm like, I never get that worked up about this issue. Yeah, you know, Hemet, if I knew for certain that a lot of the stuff were pure myths, that might rile me up even a bit more. But yeah. I'm already doing the work. You know what I mean? Like, I'm already, like, doing the show and talking to stuff about people. So I don't know if it would change that much. Yeah, like, I don't doing. think it would change the fact that you're doing yeah. this show about the way you're doing it. It wouldn't yeah. suddenly become, like, the truth wanted by the way it's all Christian. I don't <laughs> think it would be the same type of thing because there is a difference between saying like Jesus, for example, existed as a human versus the thing that would change a lot of us, which is he was real and all the supernatural stuff was true. Right. Which would, I mean, it better change that's, a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's different, right? Like right. that's that changes the game as as someone would say. But yeah, I agree with Tim. Tim, I'm glad that you have found a lot of interest in this stuff and I'm glad you're talking to people about it because more people at least, I mean, in probably my opinion, probably Hammond's opinion as well, at least need to be having conversations about this stuff. Um, I, I think, I've said this so many times. I think the yeah. thing that pisses me off more than anything else when it comes to religion in general, I don't mm -hmm. care if people are religious. I do get angry when they're apathetic and never think about any of yeah. this. Yeah. It's like, God, how do you not care about this thing that oh, I can't yeah. stop thinking about? Yeah, for me, it's like <laughs> people are like, you know, uh, yeah, religion was just never a big deal. And like, oh, who cares what people believe? It's like, what right. do you mean who cares what people believe? Like there's yeah. the people like, that why? have those beliefs are much. Yeah, they're making your policies I, I, right now, I, I, my friend. Like they're deciding how we live our lives right now. Like that's yeah. that's why you should care. But anyway, I was, only, I was adding on to say, Tim, yeah. I uh, I am with Dan on that. Thank you for being interested in that stuff and for raising yeah. those issues. 
Yeah, thanks for talking to us, Tim. Yeah. And always a pleasure talking to you. Hope to hear from you again sometime. And I hope you're doing safe, my friend, because I know it's uh, pretty wild out there with the fires going on. So let's go ahead and go to another caller here. I want to talk to you, Catherine. Catherine calling in from Arkansas. Catherine, what's going on? Yes, hello there. I thought I would call in because uh, a topic came up in the Discord chat that mm-hmm. I always find interesting, and uh, there's a, a aspect of it that I think not a lot of people know about, which is the connection between flat earthers and fundamentalist Christianity. Mm, <laughs> yeah, there is definitely a connection, but tell me your observations. Yes. Well, mostly like people just find them funny, but I find them really fascinating. So I, I know a weird amount about them. And yeah. um, it's like. Are, are you surprised by the fact I've flat heard. earth, flat earth ism has taken on a life of its own over the past couple of years? I mean, when I first heard about it, I thought it was very funny, but given that it follows the same kind of like conspiracy theory patterns of distrusting authority yeah. And, you know, what scientists say, it it seems like it's a symptom of a more worrying problem, which is that people are mm-hmm. so willing to buy into this conspiracist mindset of, like, viruses are can be planned, and mask wearing is fake, and vaccines cause autism, and, like, yeah. flat earth is just the, the very funny end point of that, really. <laughs> The Mm. thing that I found disturbing about it, and and Catherine, this is what you're saying too, isn't just that, yeah, there's there's always going to be a handful of kooks who believe all sorts of crazy stuff. What has been wild to watch for me is there are people, especially on YouTube, because that's the rabbit hole for so much of this stuff, who will at least act like they are 100% in on the flat earth thing. And they will make videos that are like, no, here's why it's legit. And it's obviously BS. You could debunk it left and right, but they're so into it. And I don't know if all the people making those things are 100% into it, or if this is just a giant trolling operation. Like they get a kick out yeah. of the fact that some or people- a might- money-making operation. I mean- that too. I, it's, it's hard for me to believe it's a money-making thing based on what I've seen. But yeah, that's not out of the question either. Yeah. They have some conferences and stuff, but it's- I, I it's think not it, like it depends getting- on the grift. I, I, yeah. I consider, the, you know, like like if we're talking about Alex Jones level stuff, like, yeah, I, I, I've studied his stuff enough to know like, okay, yeah, there's, there's a lot of product uh, alignment that goes on here. I mean, we could talk about how yeah. he was selling stuff when COVID was first hitting. That but this is they, what Catherine brings up, like the, the yeah. tactic, the tactics they use are yeah. identical to the flat earthers, which is don't believe what the smart people want you to think. Right. Then they will perpetuate. If there is a celebrity of any sort who gloms onto their idea. So for flat earthers, you had a couple of prominent basketball players like, yeah, yeah. That, that's a legit point to bring up. And then later on, like. A month later, they'll be like, yeah, I was just kidding around. Like, mm. no, you didn't sound like you were. And people yeah. did not believe that you were. Yeah, that's backpedaling. That's and backpedaling. I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but they did a survey. Like, do you think there's any reason to believe the world isn't round? And there were whatever the number was, it was too high. Wait, and of was, general population or basketball players? General population. <laughs> okay. There were people who like young people who said, there are doubts, at least, okay. about the roundness of the earth. Oh. Which no, I, the um, one thing we, the one thing we have doubt about, really, that's the one. Yeah. That's the one we choose. Now, I'd like to get a survey of the basketball population. That's that's my next interest because I imagine it's probably higher than average, right? Seems like um, it was a passing. Fa- I'm like, just look at a basketball. Right now, well, it was like a couple of them, and then they then it faded away, and everyone stopped. Yeah, like I, you've been covering this for a bit to have it. So I don't know because like I, I've seen documentaries, you know, I've I've read <laughs> people's stuff like I, I think everybody in the skeptic community has been trying to figure out where is all this coming from? And I don't know if there's a clear answer. Like, I, like, I think some of it is just when you find a subculture of people of any hmm. kind, it's so uh, I want to say this without being snarky about it. 
Like there are plenty of subcultures that I look at and I'm like, I just want to make fun of them. Sure. But I, but I know the people that are in them take it seriously and they don't like it when people like me are making fun of that. And I, I get that. I respect that completely because those subcultures have a place. And I think for something like flat earthers, this may be the one place where the people who are 100% convinced the earth is flat, where they get to be the smart ones who know things and all those PhDs and scientists and the people who mm. are on TV all the time because they're the smart ones. Like, no, they don't know what they're talking about. They're wrong about all this. And all of a sudden you get to feel like you're in on a secret that no one else gets. I'll be yeah. honest with you. When I became an atheist for myself, when I was like 14 or something, and I and I convinced myself that God doesn't exist, that is kind of a mentality I had that I feel like I found out a secret that most of the country, much less the world, doesn't know yet. Right. And the question is, do you want to be an evangelical about it? Do you just quietly accept it? What do you do? And you could see the direction I went with that. Mm -hmm. But like, I feel like I know something that a lot of people haven't figured out yet. I don't know. I think that's the yeah. case for many atheists as well who change and become yeah. an atheist. And I think part of that is the appeal to the flat earther thing or the COVID conspiracy thing or name your anti-vaxxers thing. For once, you have a group of people who are able to say, no, no, no. I've done my own research on this. I know the facts about this. You should trust me because I've dug into this. Why would you listen to a random person just because they have PhD after their name? I yeah. think that is part of the appeal. I, I think you're hitting on something heavy here because if you ask rural populations what you know what their biggest complaints are with and not to get too political, but their representation in government, I think they'll say they don't feel like they're heard. They really yeah, don't. It's, they don't it's all elitists all yeah, the time. It's super Ted elitist. Cruz will say it's mm -hmm. the elitist, and it's like, dude, you went to Harvard Law. Yeah. Like, you know, but yes, that is exactly it. It's like, yeah. oh, it's the smarty pants. It's the ones right. who look down upon us, which is a very legit concern that they should have mm -hmm. that they're not being fairly represented. But the way that manifests, like Catherine's yeah. bringing up with all the conspiracy things, it's like it all follows the same pattern. It Name your pick. It doesn't have to be religious. It just mm -hmm. has to make you feel like you know something. And those are the videos, like the flat earther ones. And for weird reasons, I subscribe to many of them. They've actually decreased in number. Like they don't put out as much stuff as they used to, mm. but it follows the same pattern of, let me tell you why this person's wrong about it. Let me show you diagrams. That yeah. Prove. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, if this is your, yeah. If this is your first time looking at like skeptic, I'll call it skeptical content because skeptic and skeptical, right. you know, skeptic community, that's a different thing, right? <laughs> skeptical content, right? Um, and you're thinking, wow, that's a, that's, you know, maybe he's he's talking about a fact that you heard one time in passing and he's debunking it. You know, like it, it can seem impressive on a first time, like looking at this stuff because the I like, had people close to me who said, hey, yeah. did you see the pandemic video that came out today? And the answer at the time for me was, I know what you're talking about. It's the covid conspiracy video and yeah. I have not seen it yet. But I already know it's full of BS because right. of how it's spreading and stuff. But, Hemin, but I bet. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I bet if you ask the average person right now why they believe the earth is round, I, I bet you half of them would give really bad answers. Yeah, 100%. I, you are totally right. And yeah. again, I I understand that. It, yeah. it may, It's not intuitive. It's yeah. why there was any doubt in the first place. And you needed the math and science to figure that out before you had better tools. Because you're right. It's not intuitive. It, you wouldn't be wrong to want to think that. But of course... We do have ways of knowing. There are yeah. rather simple ways of knowing. But the question is, do people care enough to actually get the answer? Or do they kind of like yeah. being on the outs and sure. being in the special group of people who know something everyone else doesn't? I yeah. mean, today it, is 9-11. We know that happens. Right, right, right. Yeah, don't don't bait the 9-11 truthers on this episode, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if it happens, it happens, right? But yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I think it's... Um, because people in the flat earth community, they seem happy to know other flat earthers. They like, there's there, obviously, there conferences. you wouldn't there do a conference, right? Unless you want to meet other people they that are talking about this from stuff. All over the world. All over the, all over the globe. All uh -huh. over the globe. So, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> all across it's, the globe. All across yeah. The globe. Like, I, I, it's, it's an identity thing. It's a, yeah. it, it's a feeling of empowerment. There's empowerment. Like, yeah, I don't know about you. Sure. 
but you go to an atheist conference. My first time doing it was one of the scariest things ever because I was like, I've never been around this many people that were considered like the enemy in my mind. Uh, and, and just a short couple of years were, earlier. How were you um, when you went to that? Were you still religious when you went to that for the no, first my, time? My first atheist conference was American Atheist 2018. So I had already been an atheist okay. for a little bit at that point. I had just never been to a big event. And um, like- See, my thinking, the first time I went to one, I was an atheist mm. and I went there because I had the opportunity to go. So I went and I think the think feeling I had was less about that they're all the enemies because I never had that thought to begin with. Okay, and yeah. more like, holy crap, I don't have to like watch what I'm saying here because yeah, that's true too. The first time I've been around people who kind of think the same way I do about this thing, and there is yeah. there's an amazing feeling you get with that when you're well, surrounded by like minded people who have been through some of the same experiences. Yeah, my first thought was most of these people here are twice my age, and that's yeah. that's a thing. Uh, hopefully, yeah. we're still working on that. Other yeah. thing was, yeah, like these are people who are saying all the stuff I thought in my head for a long time, and they're saying it out loud, and there's absolutely no consequences for them saying it. Yeah, <laughs> and so. And when that, I heard some of the speakers too, who were saying yeah. things that now to me are not really mind blowing because I've heard them so many times, but when I heard them for the first time and it's like, holy crap, like not only are you right and I yeah. agree with you, but like you put that in a way I've never thought about and that's fascinating. Right. Yeah. And so, you, it, okay. Put that in the flat earther shoes, right? Yeah. Same thing. Same thing. You go to a conference. Wow. These people are saying this stuff that I get made fun of with my friends and family. They don't but think I'm stupid. With me. They don't yeah. think I'm stupid. So yeah, the appeal They're there, validating. it totally makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Totally makes sense. And anyway. Creation Museum, I mean, what is Ark Encounter? What is the Creation Museum? Yeah. If not an entire group of people with a lot of money who are able to say to the Christians who visit their place, no, 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 you're not the stupid one. Right. You don't have to listen to those evolutionists. You don't 100%. have to listen to the scientists. Like, no, here you are honored. You believe in the thing that's right. And yep. look at this giant boat we made to validate <laughs> your feelings They're literally a monolith in our in our yeah <laughs> it's, it's crazy but anyway Catherine, we've been talking a lot yes. um did you have any other observations <laughs> you wanted to make before we uh just jump to another call here oh yeah well the uh the creation museum is a great example of it because the uh the secret ingredient in why a lot of people are flat earthers is because they are like very fundamentalist literal bible believing christians and uh have you found that i have like not found that to be the case Ooh. i there i do think I there are a lot of the case in quite a few times okay hmm what why have you not found that like, to be the case I mean, i'm curious i found oh. on youtube a uh, a guy i think it was some kind of splinter baptist group but he was giving a sermon on why the bible says the earth is flat and like they have this list of verses wow. that are from various parts of the bible that so. sort of glancingly talk about cosmology like there's one in isaiah talking mm. about god's throne sitting above the circle of the earth not the yeah. sphere, the circle so, you yeah. know, it's flat. And a few about how, like, in some cataclysm, the sun will stop shining and the moon will not give its light. Yeah. Implying that the moon yep. doesn't reflect the sun's light like we know it does, but right. instead it has its own light source. There are, there are verses they can take out of context and, and make it yeah. suggest there's a flat earth. What I have found is that the people who... Uh, want to prove to others, well, again, whether or not they're trolling or they take this seriously, they're very much uh, of the mindset that, no, 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 science is on our side. So mm -hmm. they don't bring in religious arguments. They're trying to say, no, 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 if you look around the horizon, you could see whatever it is. I don't know what their, argu their arguments are dumb. Yeah. But they're saying, like, you don't have to look to the Bible. This is flat earth is proven by the science and we can mathematically show it's true. And of course yeah. they can't. But they're trying to make the conspiracy theory make sense by saying, you don't have to believe in God for this to make sense. You don't need to take this on faith. We can prove it. And of course they can't. But so I've seen a lot of that. That's why I was doubting uh, what Catherine was saying. Like in my yeah. experience, I have not heard it as much from a religious perspective, though I'm, though I'm sure there is a overlap there that is heavy. I've found a yeah. lot of people pushing for it from a place of 
non-religion because to them that's the way to convince other people to buy into their myth i agree with you Hemet. in my experience i haven't ex encountered that i from the flat earthers i've seen that are christian they're the type that will say no you need to really believe in the bible and if you really want to believe it this is what the bible says um and i i i've i've looked at the issue on that enough to where i actually think if you understood you know, we don't have a great idea of what Jewish cosmology was like, um, but just based on, you know, the bits we can take from the Bible, it was definitely different from how we see, like, like, even if you're talking about, like, I mean, Jesus any cosmology is going to be different. Yeah, like, Jesus' ascent into heaven, I think they really thought he was, go like, physically moving from one place to another. <laughs> I think yeah. you could make that argument. It says he went behind the clouds. Like he went, like <laughs> there's there's something happening there that would make sense to the audience at the time of right. he's going from one place to another. It's not another dimension. At least that's not what it looks like. But you know, that that gets a bit more if abstracted. you've ever if yeah. you've ever heard there was a there's a podcast, This American Life, that is pretty popular, but there was a story they did way back when where someone was deeply convinced, like a back of the envelope sort of physicist who has no formal training in it, not a PhD in physics or anything, just a dude who said, I've disproven Einstein's theory of relativity. Of course. And of course, like he did not. Yeah. But they kind of walk him through like, what would it take to convince you you haven't figured this out? Can we show your proof, quote unquote? Can we mm -hmm. show it to a real astrophysicist or whoever it is studying that stuff? And like they did, they brought it to that person and of course, that person's like, no, this is completely wrong. Here's why it's wrong. Trying to bring it back and like, okay, look, we've, we've taken you seriously. We've shown what your thing is to the people who know this stuff and study it better than anybody else. Now, will you listen? And they're yeah. like, no, but I feel yeah, I'm feel right. it. And we've this seen this with the like, virus too. Like, should I listen yeah. to the epidemiologist or do I listen to random conspiracists right. online in terms of what's happening? Uh, and phys of course, phys you don't have it. Physics is, I mean, often lauded for being a very subjective science. You know, it's it's typically about people's feelings. Yes, um, I found as which is as probably it's, it's its biggest yeah. criticism, I think. Uh, but <laughs> anyway, hey, Catherine, we've been on this call for a while. Thanks so much Thank for you. talking to us, and uh, it was a great thing to talk about. Obviously, yeah, we got great to get. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Dropped dropped you right at the end there. But yeah, good Thank talking you. about topics like this because obviously we both get riled up about this <laughs> stuff i agree with you have i think that people like you know, like people really don't hit the flat earth community in the way that i'd like them to talk about it they don't understand they just think it's like obviously yeah okay in that particular case i think I, I mean as someone who follows that stuff mm -hmm. I, I feel like it's faded away at least for now because there yeah, is I hope so. no I hope so. I think some of their biggest people kind of dropped off and decided to do other stuff. I don't know. That might be the most positive thing we've heard on this show <laughs> in this year. I think yeah. that might be. Yeah. I mean, the downside is it's maybe because they have other conspiracies they can. Uh, that's on true. Now. That's true. I think like I, I try not to say, you know, obviously education is a component of it, but like I, I find it so elitist to say like, oh, it's just a thing of miseducation. Because again, it's I think not. if you ask the average person, they're not going to give a great answer either. It's just, yes. it's, it's it's a lot into identity and psychology more than anything, but it's, it's very yeah. much not. And by the way, I feel the same way when people, when I hear atheists yeah. say that about religion too, like if you were smarter, you wouldn't be religious. Like, dude, it's yeah. not about that. Yeah. It has nothing to do with how smart you are. It's, it's about the feeling you get. It's about yeah. the community you're in. And again, yes, if you're a conspiracist, when it comes to like the flat earth stuff, um, odds are, if you have a formal training in that stuff, you're not going to believe it. Probably. But also there is this value. I'm not saying be, it's obviously not right, but I get the value in feeling like I get this. And that is not a thing that is just like, oh, stupid people figure that out. No, yeah. that's a feeling that affects all of us. Like we all have dumb opinions about different yeah, things for sure. For a lot of reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm hundred percent with you there, but I want to get to another caller here. Um, so I want to talk to Jacob who is calling in from Texas. Jacob, what's going on? You're on Truth Wanted. Hey, Dan. Hey, uh, Emma, how y'all doing? Hello. Good. Doing awesome. Glad to talk to you, Jacob. What's going on? Oh, uh, nothing. I, I was wanting to talk about street epistemology. I've been uh, working on it a little bit. Um, every chance that I get. And uh, I came across an issue with like, well, maybe an issue. I wanted to get y'all's opinion. But like when you... Um, when you interview somebody about like moral issues and they're like on the extreme end of the confidence 
scale. They're like a hundred percent. Um, I'm what I ran into one yesterday. It was like, that got me thinking. Cause it was something, it was an issue that I agreed with. So I was trying to take my blinders off and be objective and trying to instill doubt into something that I, I felt like he was, answer, he was responding to my questions was going, you know, Hey, maybe he does have a good reason to have a high level of confidence for this. But like, especially where, where there's like moral issues, like, you know, anything you can imagine with, you know, children or like, can you justify owning somebody as property? Like those kind of things. Okay. Um, are you asking how you can change their mind when they are already dead set on an answer? Well, I, I could be wrong about the, uh, you know, there's different agendas for street epistemology, but like, um, I'm trying to back people off of a hundred percent or instill a little bit of doubt or have them say, Oh, you know, if there was new information, I might change my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So weird I, when you're, <laughs> I think you said this and I just want to make sure, cause I'll, I'll give my take on it first is that, you know, if there's some, you know, with street epistemology, you're, you're not necessarily, your goal isn't to necessarily give people doubt, right? It's more of a reflection of people's beliefs. It's like, yeah, you know, maybe there is a reason for them to be a hundred percent confident and, and you're just giving them a reflection of that. But oftentimes we find that the confidence of our beliefs maybe isn't as justified as we thought. So if we discover that that might be the case, then that's where we might want to lower that doubt. But until a reason is presented otherwise, you know, there's no reason why we shouldn't allow people to have 100% confidence on something other than like, you know, maybe we wouldn't say we would have 100% confidence, but, you know, we're not talking about our beliefs. We're talking about our interlocutors' mm -hmm. beliefs, right? So that's the first thing yeah. I would say. The second thing I would say is your question is, if you wanted to instill that doubt, or maybe you think that person's confidence isn't, um, shall we say, as valid, how do you do that? Well, one, I mean, again, that is going to be contextual, but you want to figure out, firstly, why they believe what they believe. And, and uh, if anyone's saying they have 100% confidence about something, they have a reason for it. It may not be a good reason, but they're probably going to at least give some reason. You know, Maybe they just say they have faith uh, in that idea of being true. If, I mean, if we're talking about morality, I just have faith. I, I believe in an intrinsic goodness because it just makes sense to me. Um, you know, That's something where you could say, like, well, is there if something didn't make sense to you or if somebody presented an example that doesn't intuitively make sense, would that lower your confidence? You know, and it's just giving examples. It's just giving suggestions as yeah. to what could potentially lower people's confidence. You don't have to give real examples that exist in the real world. It could just be hypotheticals because again, we're just kind of dealing with sort of a, a virtual barometer of people's confidence um, because, you know, they may say that they're hundred percent confident, but maybe they're, you know, they, they haven't fully examined their beliefs yet. So that's the first kind of suggestion. I don't know if maybe Hammett wants to chime in and, and give his thoughts. I don't have anything to add to that. I, I think mm -hmm. I'm right there with you. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't have anything there. Oh, there you go. What do you think, Jacob? Okay, yeah, because I, I was going through those hypotheticals and stuff, and he was still pretty staunch in his belief. Well, can, and, can you can uh, you maybe um, play back the conversation for us a bit? Sure. Sure. I was like online, I was on my Instagram and I just like posted a, a question. I was like, do you have any uh, deep beliefs that cause you to uh, live your life differently because of them? Like a hundred percent was yes. <laughs> okay. Question was like, would you like to have uh, your belief uh, respectfully challenged? And it was like 75% no. And I found that to be really interesting. Hmm. And then the third question was like, if you said yes twice, um, then go ahead and put your statement in here. And then, mm. um, so yeah, so the, the person just put veganism. Okay. And, uh, so I was like, okay, well, how do I, how do I make this a claim? And I was like, okay, so first I went with definitions. I was like, what is your definition? What is your personal definition of veganism? Good. I didn't want him like looking it up. And then, uh, he was like, well, uh, I uh, want to avoid, yeah, I'm paraphrasing here, avoid sure. causing, um, harm, to others, unnecessary harm to others. And then I was like, oh, why is that belief important to you? And then he said, because I wouldn't want to uh, be subjected to those treatments, so I don't want to uh, be a part of doing that to others. And then so I was like, well, how, how long do you think you're going to be a vegan? Like, is this something that you plan on doing for a while? And okay. then he said, until the day he dies... 
So now I was like, okay, that's a hundred percent. Now I can work with that. And then okay. so I was like, well, what would you have to learn in order for you to lower your confidence that you're actually going to die being vegan for the rest of your life? Ah, okay. Uh, that's so interesting. Yeah, see, like, are you, sh- you? Yeah, go ahead. The direction that I went with it. And then I started plugging in examples. I'm like, what if, you know, we come, what if new science had come out and they had determined that uh, you need to have some nutrients from animal products or else you, you can have deteriorating brain or muscles or like you won't live as long as a healthy life. Would that sway you? And he said no. And then I was like, well, what if an event happened where plants became unedible or unavailable for, you know, months to years long on end, would that change your mind? And he was like, well, at that point I've had a pretty good run and okay. animals are going to need to eat plants in order to eat animals. So I'm out. I've always yeah. liked the question of what happens if you can, I mean, we've seen this with like the impossible burger and stuff, but what happens if you could imitate meat without using meat? Mm-hmm. Um, and would you eat that? And I think I grappled with that for a while. I've tried it. It doesn't taste better to me because I'm not used to that taste as a vegetarian in general. Mm -hmm. But I remember that one like messed with me for a while where it's like, would I even want to eat that if it was made to taste like that? And Mm -hmm. part of me now is like, well, it's not that. So why would I have an ethical concern with it? And ultimately, I'm just like, man, it doesn't taste that good for me. But I'm also not a meat eater who's converting to that. Yeah. But anyway, the, I yeah. the, I wonder if you walked away from that conversation, even online or whatever. I'm wondering if you walked away with that thinking like that person is not persuadable because I don't know that I would change my mind anytime soon like that. But that is the sort of question that would linger in my mind for a while. One thing I would have asked, yeah. Jacob, I think if I was in your shoes, I think I might have asked, um, you know, <laughs> You're because because the question for him is, is, is as a practice is one of ethics. So I think I maybe I would have focused right. more on the ethics portion of that. I know I literally just said you should give examples, but in this particular situation, now that I'm reflecting on the, your conversation, maybe it should be more of a question of what would convince you that uh, going vegan isn't actually the most ethical uh, action, or maybe that uh, there's some. You know, because if, if he's doing veganism as a point of ethics, right, if that's what's convincing him, then is there something in their ethical conscience that would convince them otherwise um, to not go vegan? Um, that maybe that it's, it would be more ethical not to. I couldn't conceive of that. Um, but maybe, you know, in, in that conversation, maybe the, some examples could come up or maybe um, I, mean, I mean, that to me, that's what would mo- make most sense. Um, if so, like you're stuck agree. on a desert island, you need to yeah. eat meat to stay alive. But <laughs> by by living, you'll Something be able like to that. do so much more good in the yeah. world. That's a good example. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, obviously uh, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? And I think about stuff I say on this show where it's like, oh, I wish I would have said this better. So I, I think what you did so far, Jacob, sounded pretty interesting. And you got somebody to talk about something. Yeah, um, those are and, interesting. The fact that anyone responded to that yeah. post and is like, yeah, I would change yeah. my mind. Let's talk about it. That's interesting. Yeah, really cool. Really that cool. Was the and- only response that I got. And I was, <laughs> I was hoping, you know, I had a lot of people voting. And it was really interesting to see the ratio between, oh, yeah, I've got those beliefs and like, oh, no, I don't really want to touch them. No, thank you. Like, respectfully or not, like, they were, you know. They're your beliefs. I mean, saying no, thank you. Yeah. I, it's funny. I was just talking with Anthony Magnabosco this week, and he just told me, I don't know if he's released it yet on his channel, but he just said he had a really interesting veganism conversation in street epistemology that he oh, thinks good. might get, like, controversial. So I don't know. I, I don't know what he's yeah. talking about yet. He didn't tell me the details, but I, I need to check into that because it's 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 becoming more of a topic. I mean, y'all, you guys already know that. Watch this. I went vegan. Uh, it's starting in July. I've been doing that since then, and uh, it's been working out pretty good for me so far. Nobody's giving me too much flack about it. I I, I kind you of uh, it okay. I jo- I joke about it here and there. I think as uh, if if uh, if I become uh, if Truth Wanted becomes a vegan exclusive show, maybe there'll be riots. <laughs> but otherwise, nobody seems to um, give you too much heck about it. So, Jacob, thanks for calling in. About Thank was you. there anything else from that conversation that I, I'm curious now? Because like, what do you plan to do in the future? I want to know. Are you gonna use that method of posting on Instagram? Because because I I like that. That's kind of cool. I don't know. I'm kind of dabbling with it because uh, I've been watching, you know, street epistemology. But I'm like really into them. I like love when a new mm-hmm. one comes out. I get all excited, and my wife is the same. 
And I've been throwing around the idea, and then this is like a long way from fruition, but I really enjoy watching those videos, and I think it would be cool to uh, go out and, you know, make them, or at least have conversations. But then, you know, you probably should be recording them if you're going to do that. And uh, so long term, if like, you want I'm going up. Uh, yeah, recording is cool if if, if you think it's it. worth sharing for people and stuff. But hey, there's no rule saying you have to record conversations to do that. I think that's sure. a weird kind of uh, thing people think of their minds sometimes where, oh, I have to record it because it's an SE conversation. Like, no, you can just do it in your personal life. I think that that's when you get a lot of, um, you know, some people aren't comfortable on camera. So you get a lot of candid responses right. that way and stuff yeah. too. So it's cool. But anyway, well, Jacob. Yeah, it, would be, it would definitely be pushing my boundaries. But yeah, I, I just think it's yeah. uh, entertaining. And I think it'd be cool to do that. That's why I'm just kind of practicing with like online. But, you know, it goes a lot faster when you're having a real conversation and you got body yeah. language and all that. Pandemic ruins everything. It does. It does. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really does. Um, but yeah. yeah, maybe six feet apart with some masks on, yeah. you can have some <laughs> conversations. You know, we'll see. But Jacob, thanks for calling in, man. That's a cool call. I'm, I'm glad you shared that story. It you you recalled your street epistemology story way faster than I would with any of my conversations. I will say <laughs> that you gave a point by point. I guess it was fresh on your mind. But uh, yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. I'm curious, Henry, because I know. I mean, you you've talked to street epistemologists. You, you you've seen the content. Do you have a take on street epistemology? Is it something you you practice, or what? What's up? No, because I don't like interacting with people. But <laughs> I, I do like like the idea of just let me talk to a stranger for a while doesn't appeal. Yeah. But I do yeah. I appreciate watching those videos too because I think the thing that is is really interesting is again going back to the apathy thing. So many people never talk about any of this stuff. So many people, I think, want to, but who are they going to do it with? And all of a sudden, for someone to say, I don't care if you're right or wrong. This isn't a debate. Mm. I want to get to the heart of how did you come to this conclusion? What would it take to change your mind? How do you think? Period. Like, you know, that's yeah. the issue. And for so many people who haven't done that, not because they're dumb, not because they they don't want to, but because no one's ever asked them about it and to see them work through their own logic that way, that to me is really fascinating to watch for the same reason that, uh, that Jacob was mentioning. Yeah. And so I, I definitely understand the value of it. And I do like that concept mm -hmm. and it is very much, at least in Anthony's videos that I've seen, it's not a dude walking up to strangers saying, let's do this. It's, if you want to talk to me and you got a few minutes to spare, I'm right here. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, like, I, it, it's, if you were describing it to somebody who is hearing it for the first time, it does sound kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. It's like, oh, you just go up to, you, you talk to strangers about on camera for like concepts. 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> about their deeply held beliefs. Yeah. That sounds a little strange, but like, if you yeah. actually watch it and uh, again, as someone who's been on the other side of it, like I, it's, it's very fun. You want you talk to the people who who've been at like they're smiling, you know, like uh, as long as people are happy with it. Sometimes, you know, and I just get back to yeah, like everyone hates small talk, right? Yeah. But there is a deep conversation with a total stranger mm -hmm. about a topic you personally have probably spent a ton of time thinking about, but literally nobody in your life circle is has probably asked. asking you about yeah. it, and yeah. so here's a chance to do it. And hey, it's my, uh, Jacob, if you're still listening, like it may be even better if it's not on camera because yes. it will make them more willing to have that conversation with you. 100%. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Like whether you call it, you know, call it street epistemology, call it Socratic method, call it whatever you want, as long as you're having conversations with people about stuff they wouldn't otherwise think about. I mean, you know, if that's activism to you, if that's just being a good human being, like I, I think it's I think it's something everyone should do on sure. some level. Um, now, some people do it better than others, sure. and some people m may uh, actually try to push an agenda in ways that they do some of these one things. One thing, but, you've you seen know. these. I think one thing I always appreciate about Anthony's videos is, mm -hmm. just because I've seen more of them, is that he will say, here is the encounter I had with my own commentary, because even someone who is as practiced in it as he is, is like, here's everything I did wrong. Let me talk about it. Here's what I should have asked. Here's what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, like I constantly yeah. have those thoughts about things I posted today. It's like, oh, yeah. oh why did I say that? Why did I write that headline or whatever I, I it was? I don't know a single content creator uh, who yes. has ever looked at their history of work and been like, yes, this is perfect. Everything yeah. I said was great. <laughs> if you are not completely cringing at everything you've ever made, what the yeah. hell are you doing? 
Yeah, it's hard for me to look at stuff I said last week sometimes. Like it's 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 I don't know. It's 100%. hard. It's hard. Yeah. But I will, um, I will eat this video after we hang up. <laughs> yeah, like, I know. That's how I, it works. I know. Yeah, but like I, I, I agree with you there. It's like, you know, we, we don't talk about this stuff enough anyway. Even if it's not even if it's not your best work, even if it's not right. something that you know um you're gonna it, write. One difference, sorry to butt in there. One uh -huh. difference to me is I still have those thoughts. Yeah, Every, Like you said, content creators have those thoughts. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I think I'm much better at is figuring out what things are going to be issues and dealing with it before it goes out into the public. Things that I thought would be interesting lines that when I look back at it, it's like, you know what? That is not going to go over the way I think it's going to go over. Yeah. Um, and I can at least predict when something's going to be controversial because I'm prepared for it. Mm -hmm. um, some things, if it goes like controversial, it's like, oh, man, I didn't even think anyone would see it that way. Yeah. I'm a lot better now at saying, you know what? If we put this in there, they're going to take it this way. Let me try to address that. Things I'll find hilarious or mm. I would make a joke about if it was me and you talking in private. It's like, you know what? If I put that out there right now as we're talking and doing this, not everyone's going to take that comment the same way. And I don't mean it to be like that. So I want to watch myself. I have a lot more of those thoughts now. And that doesn't mean that everything yeah. I put out there is going to be uh, sure without criticism. But it's like, I well, think I'm better at predicting what people are going to say now. I want to deep dive because we got a couple minutes left on the show here. And, and maybe we can spend some of that uh, deep diving on this because, um, you know, people, uh, pe man, everybody's on the internet now. You know, yeah. everybody has a hot take. Everybody is posting stuff on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. And, and has not, a whole history of it. Yeah. Like it, and, luck and running for office. There's yeah, right. <laughs> like uh, I, I grew up, I'm just young enough to where I have pictures of me and, and posts I've made as like a teenager onward. Yeah. Um, and even, I'm already embarrassed of that, let alone yes. the people who are even younger than me who have been on since they were like eight, you know, and, and have I have going. archives of stuff I've written about religion. Granted, I was an atheist, but going back to 2006, which is when I started doing it online. And oh, man, again, I think stuff I wrote last week was cringeworthy in some ways. <laughs> and I had I had to figure out, like, do I want to just delete everything before a certain point? Because yeah. one, when would that point be? Because it could very well just be, you know what, after two hours, just banish it from the internet. But it's yeah. up there. And there's yeah. stuff in there that I would never say today. Things that I would today find sexist, misogynistic, which mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking, but I know it's coming off that way now. Yeah. It's like, I just hope anyone can see like, well, that's the date of it. <laughs> you know, and right. I hope you don't see it anymore. I've learned from it. Um, yeah. It, it, the, the structures that we're complicit in with our posting is different too. So it's like, you know, if you're part of a movie, like Ace Ventura, right? I was thinking about this recently. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Ace Ventura does not age well. All no. right. I, I dressed up as Ace Ventura like a couple years ago for Halloween. And I'm like, oh, I hadn't seen this movie since I was a kid. And I, <laughs> and I watched that movie when I was a kid and I enjoyed it when I was a kid. Yeah. And you're right. I haven't thought about it yeah. until whatever anniversary it was a little bit ago. Right. And then I saw the takes on it. It's like, holy crap, that is transphobic. I didn't yeah. think about that when I was a kid watching it. Yeah. And so like, but you know, if you're, if you're a grip on that movie, if you're a camera person be on that movie, you know, like I think most of us can agree, like your level of complicity is kind right. of not as high, but right. like now, right with the internet, everybody's making, you can make your own channel and do your own thing and do everything by yourself. And like the level of responsibility there is so <laughs> different, isn't yes. it? Like, and so I, I think there's two things I think about that one. It's like, okay, it does make being part of different organizations or just being part of different collectives harder. If you're part of a community that is, cause look, man, the atheist community, look, look, you go back to stuff like 10 years ago or stuff like stuff before I was a part of it. Uh, it I mean, like I, I, I see work it's by like, my, I work by myself now. Yeah. It's like, Whoa, people says, and like, but also being individuals online, you have to figure out how do you grow? How do you right. learn to change? And like, it, how do you know when you've changed? I th I, this, these are I the leave, questions of our times, I think, right? I joke about this. I don't really read the comments on my website or YouTube in general, because there are a lot of them. And I 
that's maybe a humble brag or something, but there's a lot. I can't go through all of them, yeah. but I occasionally read them and they do help me because they point out things that either I missed. There have been times when I said something that I totally wasn't saying, but they pointed it out and they called me out on it. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, it's like, all right, I will make a mental note to never do that again. And I hope I don't. Yeah, But that's to me, like, you're right. I don't have anyone checking my work per se. I don't work for an organization. I'm not accountable to anybody else, but I do try to be accountable to myself and the people who are reading it and who come back with legit criticism. And that's the, up. I mean, the upside is I hope you are seeing the best version of me now, yeah. but yeah, man, there is so yeah. much crap that I've put out that I hope I've gotten better at. And yeah. that's the up and down side of it is, yeah, there's this whole history of crap, but hopefully you can, people like our age, younger, will learn mm -hmm. to judge people by where they're at, how they've changed, and not just something dumb they did a while ago, because, man, there's so many YouTube people who have been like, I'm shutting down my channel because I did some horrible stuff Yeah, I when mean, I was there's... popular way back when. It's like, yeah, that was horrible, but also you're not that person now. I don't know that I would hold that against you as much as I do. Yeah, there's literally a video of me talking about how I'm a Christian and how I believe in God. <laughs> you know, like I yeah. think about that and it's like, oh, I was 19 years old when I said that. I am not the person I was at 19 yeah. years old. And the world wasn't the same yeah. when I was 19 years old. Like, I, I mean, I should have been more aware uh, for the age that I was. But like, yeah, like I was ignorant on a lot of stuff. And But we all are. Like we, yeah. all, we all have our blind spots. And the question yeah. is, how do we change that and again, the up and down side of doing the sort of thing we do, which is very mm -hmm. public, is that yeah. when you get called out, it is public. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's, you change. It, yeah. It's a good thing for me that I learn that stuff. Maybe I learn it the hard way, but I learn it. I hope I improve on it. It's it's good to have an honest conversation about it, not to make excuses for anything that we've ever, you know, we regret, but more so just to figure out like, hey, we're also trying to figure out this, this world that we live in now, right? Because I don't know. It's, it's complicated, man. It's complicated. And like, if, if we held to the fire sometimes of, of YouTube commenters, the same that we, we do comic creators, like it's a different story, right? But we right. do have a responsibility on our platforms and stuff. And, yes. I, and I think about that. I try my best, but gosh, it is hard. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know that we could talk about that all day, obviously, but um, yeah, just for the past couple, last couple minutes here, yeah. I just want to, um, talk to you about you know any upcoming stuff that you're doing um any stuff you're excited about what's going on in the world of heaven meta oh i wish i could tell you there's a million things going on but right now we're all in that same rut um i will I'm, i've been having a lot more fun playing around with youtube a lot more than i have mm -hmm. been so hopefully putting out more videos that way um it's up on the screen you can yeah. see the twitter and and youtube channel and you know what i one thing that I often try to do is I will try different projects. I'm working on one right now. I'm not ready to say anything yet, but it's one of those like, mm -hmm. you know what? We'll stick it on the wall. Maybe it'll help out some people. And if it doesn't, I'll, I'll abandon it and we'll try something else. But um, any if you're interested in anything that I do, FriendlyAtheist.com is where I post pretty much everything. And YouTube is, is YouTube. Go to Friendly Atheist on YouTube. Yeah, there you go. Well, cool, cool, folks. And uh, as always... I am Objectively Dan. This is Truth Wanted. If you want to support this show, liking and subscribing on YouTube is awesome. Leaving a review on iTunes or Spotify, wherever else you get your podcasts, that is helpful as well. On Twitter at Objectively Dan, you can email the show. It's truth at atheist-community.org. And if you're looking for a response for me, that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, I like Hammett. I try to look at YouTube comments, but uh, yeah, sometimes it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so uh yeah it, it, that's a good way to contact us uh i want to give a big big shout out to the awesome crew that helps make this show happen every single week look at those guys they are amazing Thanks, everyone cats and all They're fantastic fantastic people um i also again want to plug the patreon that's one way to support the show we also have a youtube membership that's another way you can do that as well uh, you get little emoticons and stuff uh for the chat if you're watching live and that's really fun uh, I also quickly want to plug Truth Wanted Facebook fan group. I'm posting a lot more on there these days. Um, I, I want to do even more longer posts, but we we have some fun interactions on there uh, that I don't get to have on Twitter because the character limit is a lot longer. So that's really fun. Uh, yeah, and that's all I got going on. Hemet, if um, you were 
going to be of a religion again, which religion <laughs> would you choose? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. That's a strange question nowadays. Yeah. For me. Yeah. I got to think about that one. Okay. Cause I it would think... have to be like a non, it, it can't be like super fundamental no. about anything. Humanism doesn't count. All right. 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 Put, putting that out the window. Um, Pastafarianism. Come on. Let's How about let's... like, are we talking Unitarian universe? We're talking, we're talking uh, religious traditions that have older than like a hundred years. <laughs> like, like, so I will say the one I grew up with, with it's called Jainism. It's a smaller Indian religion that promotes nonviolence above pretty much everything else. And they do have some supernatural beliefs that get weird. But that was not a, like I was not scarred by that mm. religion in the way I've a lot of people have when they grew up with religion. Yeah. OK. OK. That's a good one. I, I was thinking about this for myself. Yeah, um, I would probably I don't know. I would probably adopt some sort of random cult God from the old times that would allow <laughs> me to do something really cool, maybe buccaneering or something. I don't nice. know. I, just something random. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that, that would be my pick. But uh, anyway, folks, this has been another awesome episode of Truth Wanna. Don't go away just yet because we're about to go to the Discord after show, something we do every single week, and Hammett will be joining me there. So if you're watching live, please come check us out. We're going to talk for just a couple minutes and maybe tease some things too. So that'll be fun. Uh, Hammett, thanks so much for joining me tonight. Thank you, Dan. That was fun. And as always, folks, remember to always keep on the truth, and I'll see you next time. What are we doing, man? What are we doing? No, 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 you're done.